Hello from Beer Australia Reviews and welcome to my first live stream of 2022 and today we're going to be sampling, tasting and reviewing a beer from uh, another beer from Chris from uh, Brewshed Project Maylands. So if you tuned in in early December there was two videos that we put out. Uh, one was a quick discussion between uh, me and Chris about the recipe that we were doing on this one and then also there was a full making of video. So if you'd like to see the recipe for the beer that I'm sampling tonight then uh, go back and have a look through our history and the links are in the um, uh, are the, in below as well so now the sort of beer that we're doing today that, that we're reviewing it's a it's a crystal weissen beer so it's a german style wheat beer now most people are more familiar with the cloudy style of wheat beer uh, but there's also uh, in germany equally a, a crystal um, more looks more like a standard lager or like a pilsner so that's the sort of beer that we've got here right now. Now, uh, the beer itself, uh, it was made, like I said, at the start of um, uh, at the start of uh, December. So let me just play you the. I've got a little bit of a cut down making of video. So uh, let me play that one now. Stage one is preparing the water, getting the correct water profile, and in this case, adding some lactic acid. Water temperature is set, and then the grain is added. This is a multi-stage stepped mash process which involves lots of mixing, lots of running through the water and then lots of different temperature stages. And then some more mixing and then more um, different temperature stages. So I think there, there were three or four um, steps in this process. The water was then drained from the grain and the grain was then rinsed through with the sparge water to extract all of the flavour possible from the grain. This recipe has a moderate amount of hops compared to some and um, once the hops were added the water was then cooled down and into the fermenting vessel. Okay, so like I say, the recipe video, the full one, went out in early December. So if you'd like to know what the recipe is, if you'd like to know what sort of grains went in, but more importantly with this one, the stepped in brewing process, because I, this was the first time I'd ever heard of a stepped brewing process. So the essentials are uh, when the grain um, goes into the water, it goes in at a certain temperature. I think you start out with like 30 odd degrees centigrade. Then the, uh, so the, the, the grain is then mixed around within the water to make the mash. Uh, then uh, it will sit for a certain number of minutes at a certain temperature. Um, it gets stirred around some more. It, the temperature is then increased to another level, and then it sits there for minutes more. I think it, in in total it was about a two hour process, and Chris stood there the whole time, um, um, stirring this up and stuff, uh, to extract every tiny little bit of flavour. Uh, from the grain. Now this one also, it's quite lightly um, hopped, this one. This is nothing like one of those um, East Coast um, cloudy IPAs where they add extra hops in and then some extra hops at the end just to make sure that they've got enough hops in there. Nothing like that at all. The, the hops in this one were very minimal and it was just to add a little bit of a bittering flavour and that was like relatively early on in, in, the, um, in the process as well. So a lot of beers ha are dry hopped as well these days so they have some additional hops um, when they go into the ferment vessel but not this one. Now the other beer that I've come across recently that had a stepped brewing process was a little bit of a surprise to me. If you've watched my um, review of 2021 video you'll notice that I um, chose one of the beers which is uh, a mismatched lager. So that was the other stepped process beer that I've had recently and I actually rated that one as my second best beer in, in 2021 so check out that video as well if you haven't done so far. Uh, but onto the beers. So now, um, inside the fridge, uh, we have a keg, right? And we have a squirter. And now uh, this one has potential to really go pear-shaped, but here we go. Oh, it's looking good. Look at the sparkle on that. Uh, I'm not going to overfill it because this one has a tendency. Th these beers, when they come out of the keg, they have a tendency of being really uh, having lots of fizz on them and like just overflowing. That's one of the reasons why I'm using a straight glass on this one rather than the usual like curvy hurricane glass. But look at that. That's absolutely superb from a, um, a clarity point of view. It's like a pale straw colour, this one. Loads of, uh, loads of fizz. 
lots of sparkle. Ooh, that looks good. Okay, now let me just close the fridge up, keep the cool in. Now I did have a little taste of this one earlier on, mainly because we just need to make sure that it the, it hadn't gone off. Because when the keg, when I picked up the keg from Chris's, uh, it needed to go through a secondary fermentation process. Now until you actually taste it, you never know whether the secondary fermentation process has actually been a success or not. Uh, so uh, I, I gave it a quick little taste just to make sure it hadn't gone off um, anything like that at all uh, earlier on today because I also had to clear out the um, uh, the tube for the uh, the nozzle and things so went through all that one earlier um, but okay let's give this one now a bit of a try mm. doesn't have a lot of business this one it's got that Weissen beer, German wheat beer, um, sauce for a nose to it. It's not the biggest, boldest beer, but that was never the idea with this one. When Chris was putting this recipe together, what he was after was a um, uh, was a thirst quenching summer beer, one that you'd have a, a a pint of when you come back from the beach, one of those sorts of beers, or if you're in the park having a game of football with the kids and you you have a drink there. So it it's got. It's got enough aroma in there. It's I'm getting the, the Weissen beer aroma as well. And also it still does have like a little bit of a hint of um, yeast in there as well. Which is what you expect from a Weissen beer. Because the, the secondary fermentation uh, was happened in the keg. The keg now has not been disturbed since then. So that it's it comes out as a, a crystal beer. Uh, but anyway, let's... It's, it's fresh. It's refreshing. So let's give it a taste. Um, it's like a biscuity one. It's quite tangy as well. It has really light bitterness. It's got a bit of a sparkle to it as it goes over your tongue. Ah, more tangy on the tongue, this one. Mm. Water profile, I think, is spot on on this one. Uh, if you watch any of the videos where I'm discussing things with Chris, Chris goes to real big lengths um, to make sure that the water that he uses matches the profile of the area where it's from. So he's, because this is a Bavarian style beer, he's gone ahead and he's looked at the water profiles from Bavaria in, in Germany. And then, so what he does is he strips out the, uh, all the impurities first off with a reverse osmosis filter. He then adds in some certain types of salts and other sorts of chemicals um, to make the water profile match the area uh, of beer style that he's trying to replicate. Um, so I think you've done a good job on the um, on the on the water quality here. Mm. Oh, the, this is the source of beer that you can sit there and swig the whole keg of. I've got a nine litre keg here right now. Um, it would be really easy just to sit there on a warm day and just swig the whole thing back and, and it wouldn't be clever. Uh, it wouldn't be big, but you could do it with this one. I think, Chris, you've actually hit the nail on the head with this one. The beer that you set out to, to make, uh, a Crystal Weissen beer that's quaffable, that you can um, chug back on a, on a warm day, uh, the, it's, it, I mean, this one, it's 4.3%, so I'd say that's a little bit above what I would class as a session ale. So 3 three to 3.5%, I would say, is a session ale, but it's not much above that one. But the problem with this one is, because it's so light and easy to drink, it will just go straight down. And all of a sudden, you've had like a few pints of like 4.3%, and you're going, ooh, right, I, I can feel that one. So I think, actually, Chris, this might be a little bit more than 4.3. Um, I can feel that one already. Oh, it's got that. It's definitely um, got that German style beer in there. You've actually um, really hit this one right. Uh, the um, you've definitely picked up the proper vibe of this one. German style beers, they have a certain taste to them. Or, or German beers. If you've ever been to Germany and you've had um, a Weissen beer in Germany, you'll know that they have this sort of a tangy 
sort of a, a biscuity type of a flavor to them and this one actually matches that one really well so Chris I'm actually really liking this one uh, the other thing what I'm gonna say um, and this one's for Joe from um, Margaret River Brew House and Aaron who's the uh, the chief brewer uh, they criticized me for not taking big enough swigs so this is the one Ah, it's one of those sorts of beers. Um, if ever you get a chance to sample um, some home brew that's made by someone who is an expert like Chris, and you can get them to make this particular recipe, it, it's on uh, it, it's on Chris's beer profile. Uh, it's linked from uh, the YouTube video as well, and I'll put another link um, below on this one to the recipe. Uh, if you know any home brewers, get them to make this one. This is just spot on perfect. Hold on, in fact, I think we need a refill. Oh, look at that, look at that fizz. Let's see if we can pick it up on the... Um, Do not want to overdo it. So, it's not the most complex of beers, it's not the most bitter. Uh, it, Chris has set out to make this one just a, um, a swigback beer, and I think the target has been hit spot on. Uh, Chris, well done, mate. You can do me a battle of this one anytime you want. Uh, I would take a, um, a keg of this from you anytime. Uh, next up, though, um, in a few weeks' time, we'll be doing the what I think is his best beer, which is the uh, the Nipah style beer and East Coast Cloudy Hazy IPA. So watch this space because we'll be uh, we'll do a making of video and we'll do a review of the video when the beer is ready. But yeah, okay. Um, I'm not going to um, carry on going with this one because. Um, I'm wasting now valuable um, beer drinking time by um, keeping this video going on for a bit longer. Okay, so, Chris, well done, mate. Thank you for the beer. Oh, it's crisp. It's clear. It goes down far too easy. Thanks for watching.